Stellar therapy is a newer concept of science. It has come into existence because the conventional sciences have failed treating many of the diseases. It's an intelligent saying that whenever the science we are innovating to treat where you are failing and you start on the same scientific platform, it doesn't give solutions to you. In fact, we have to create a parallel thinking why we are failing. I call it the stage of health crisis and where we need to think of the newer concept and that is how cellular philosophy has come in my mind. And we started working on thereby to create the molecules which can treat the conventional failing sciences. That is why the cellular therapy works for. When we talk of a cost, we pile up in the research in billion dollar to find a molecule like one pharma molecule going through 15 years of research and come out with the cost involved in that molecule to come with the complications and still that molecule doesn't have a result means the conventional results were very expensive and we are talking of uh, cell technologies which are going to reduce the cost sustainably very high level it can bring the cost to one tenth of the cost of the conventional medicines the most important part in this is when we talk of sustainability, we have to see that how we can scale, scaling of the production of these living cells. If we cannot scale those cells, the results are not possible because the disease ratio is so high, so high, we require in billions of these molecules. Though scalability is very important and the cost reduction is very important. The cost reduction is very important for one reason. The reason is that the cell molecule comes in your body. This is a living breathing entity. Normally I call them like a living drug molecules and they are always constantly repairing your body. If you can enhance that innate generation potential by using your own cells, the cost can be reduced in n number of diseases which we enlist when I talk about the list of diseases which can be treated, you will be shocked to know, yes, this number of diseases can be treated and that kind of sustainability we can achieve through scaling the drugs, that is living molecules. Looking at the side effects and safety of this drug molecule, this molecule compared to any other molecule is most safe, effective because it is going to work with the environment of your body. It senses what's happening around you and it releases cytokines, chemokines to repair the systems which are failing. Now in such conditions, these molecules, they are directly tried on a human disease dishes in a dish model where the human disease could be created from the stem cells and they can be tried with the drug molecule so that the animal model is lost in this. So as the side effect doesn't come in a picture at all, the molecules which are developed from the pharma will also have a minimum side effect when we use stem cell as a model to a, a drug model to a research drug model to bring in. Whereas when we talk of autologous cells of your own body to repair, being their own adult cells of your body, they don't have any side effects for you. So side effects ratio is very zero compared to any other drug molecule. And most important apart from this is how do we reach to the common man this molecule? Yes, when we have scalability, we reduce the cost and it can treat almost all undesirable conditions, devastating conditions, yet which are untreatable and reaching the common man. You can imagine the strength of this molecule to change the science for medicine. I always call, when we talk of conventional medicine, always call there is a health crisis. We are in health crisis. Does mean we are unable to treat a number of conditions. Like global diseases, we have cancer is a global disease, epidemic like. Diabetes, epidemic like. I call these conditions as a global epidemic. Now in that list, one more is adding autoimmune diseases. Because of lifestyle, we are the victim of huge number of autoimmune diseases. There are a lot of genetic diseases which are coming up because of our lifestyle again. All these if you enlist, we have more than 2000, 3000 types of diseases where none of my conventional therapy works for. And in that ratio, if you see, we are putting 
in billion dollar volume of money in research and we do not have single drug molecule which is coming out to treat these conditions. So, in fact, if you see this is a conditional health crisis costing as well as deteriorating human life. In such cases, this science, molecular science, which I always call is a sensing science which works with the micro environment because they are living breathing entities. They sense what is going on there and they do a repairing job, regenerating job, not treating the signs and symptoms which were being treated by conventional drugs. So, thereby it is a big impact on failing systems and bringing the systems, bringing the science which can bring the solution to almost all, all non-treatable challenging diseases, devastating conditions where we really live with pains. Yes, we live the, improve the quality of life with the newer science compared to conventional science. Cellular therapy is meant for all those diseases where conventional therapies have failed. To list up, I told you the cancer which is a global disease as an epidemic and the ratio is growing. Though today the concept of cancer is totally changed. It is no more a disease. We call uh, cancer, I call it a uh, disease of lifestyle and stress. Cancer is a disease of lifestyle and stress and not a cancer. In fact, when the mutations are coming and cancers are forming, we can reverse the mutations by using cell composition and lifestyle modification. This is one of the most important example where we can overcome cancer the treatment. And the idea remains here very important is that it is not concept of killing the cells. When we use a conventional methods like chemotherapies or radiotherapy, we are killing the cells. The idea is how do we generate the cells? How do we make cells live more and healthy cells? That is why all cancers could be treated using the stem cell therapies, particularly cell based therapies like DC cells, NK cells and modific modifying the T cells for them and the environment to them. Likewise, diabetes, complications, you can imagine cardiac diseases, gangrenes, retinopathy, kidney failure, none of your conventional drug can treat it like. On the contrary, adding an insulin is making patient towards close to the death. We are killing our pancreas rather. Have you ever thought, can we generate the beta cells in pancreas? Yes, stem cells work. They can generate the beta cells. They can change the immune system in type 1 diabetes. Likewise, you can say the failing organs. The idea is in failing organs is that, can we regenerate small volume of tissues and cells in the failing organs? Yes, we can do that. The idea is here, in a failing organs, organ transplant is a big issue today. The world is running after it. How do we treat organ transplants? They, there are no shops where the organs are available where you can buy and transplant it. People are waiting in queue, dying in queue. In such situations, cell technology can replace the dying cells, as I said to you, and make the organ 30%, 40% functional, which is competently enough for the person to leave. The cell therapies can be used in organ failures. And most important organ failures, what it can be helpful is that rejection, which is the biggest GVHD problem, can be overcome. And the Q people we are waiting make their healthy, effective and minimum expected, minimum expenses on it. Otherwise, GVHD, you can imagine the amount of expenses. One transplant, involved number of agencies, involved number of drugs and the failing rate and GVHD. You can imagine, if small change, GVHDs can be avoided using mesenchymal stem cells in this kind of technologies. So, n number of diseases are there, genetic diseases are there, which can be treated. Autoimmune diseases are there, multiple sclerosis is there. Cerebrovascular accidents are there, spinal cord injuries are there. You list the disease, you have a solution with stem cells. Like even muscular dystrophies can be treated. Ankylizing splotis can be treated. Joint replacement, which is a big problem today. People are waiting in queue for the knee joint, hip joint. We do not want to do replacements. We can save the joint. I have a campaign where I say, yes, you can save the joints. And the same joint you can use for the whole life. You can enumerate the number of diseases. If you can imagine, the quality of life can be improved. And all these diseases which I am lining it here can be treated with stem cell therapy. For anything which comes as a treatment or therapy, regulations are very important. Yes, regulatory bodies are working on it. 
but there are two parts in it. One is autologous therapies when we call it a therapy using in one setting, one or as in one what you can one treatment go, isolation of the cells and giving as a treatment part within one setting, then the regulatory rules does not come into existence. But when you are using this molecule as a drug molecule and bringing as a standard of health care for them, then regulatory policies, regulatory policies are going to be very important and they have to decide the standardization of the drug, quality of the drug, how to maintain the drug, how to reach to the people with the same potency. There are n number of challenges and opportunities in this uh, science, particularly when we talk of a living drug. Regulation plays a major role and India is coming up their own regulations now. I as a surgeon has a lot of passion for this subject and I have done a lot of contribution in this science particularly we have patented two technologies in regenerative medicine. One is uh, application of con osteoconductive potential of stem cells from the bone marrow to generate the joints which are degenerating particularly hip joint. There is a patent which is internationally applied as well as a national patent I applied which is published presently and it is going to be sanctioned in within a year's time. This is a major contribution. Then a lot of research I have done particularly on osteoarthritis, vascular necrosis, then neurogenic blood is one of the entity which I have done a lot of work on it like and I have made publications on this which are showing the results for spinal cord injuries where the bladders are not functioning, sphincters are not functioning. Then mesenchymal stem cell have a lot of contribution to bring this drug as a molecule. Then we are working on the two more important sciences. One is the hematological disease, bring in technology of the prodigy, which is auto manufacturing unit for all the therapies, particularly hematological cancers, solid tumors, as well as autoimmune diseases. This is going to be a changing dynamic. We have come with the prodigy as Asia's first unit to manufacture GMP graded cells and add to 100% purity science. Then we have uh, research science where we are doing a lot of work on mesenchymal stem cells as I said you. Then tissue engineering we are doing a lot of work. And then cytokine chemokines, these are our contributions to the health science. And most important what I am looking in this science, how do I take this science to the common man? So as this disruptive innovation of stem cell can change the quality of human life. Challenges and opportunities in this subject are very much because it is nascent science. Nascent science indicates that newer people coming into without having foundation of knowledge is a big challenge. So we need to educate to the people is a big, educate to the doctors and bring this technology or this science in a medical forum and medical educations and as well as in the medical schools so as this the challenges which are faced by the medical professions can be solved one. Second challenge is now as a physician or a doctor you cannot practice this science an individual you have to have a really shake hand with the researchers biological researchers. The science if you can you have to practice it has to be shake hand with the researchers means a science which is practiced by a researcher and a physician together. This is a big challenge second. We have to bring these two communities together which I believe I am working a lot on this and the opportunities are huge to treat all those untreatable conditions and most important the opportunity is that you can age graciously without disease.